Okay, there's a con uh, condition here called gestational and chronic hypertension. So basically, when a mother has uh, high blood pressure, if the high blood pressure occurred prior to her being pregnant at a certain point or after her being pregnant at a certain point, you would call it chronic hypertension versus gestational hypertension. So uh, gestational hypertension is uh, basically idiopathic, which means we don't know why it's necessarily caused, but um, it's idiopathic without significant proteinuria. Uh, proteinuria. So basic proteinuria means you look at the person's urine and you find there's lots of protein in it. So define significant, we're looking at like less than 300. So if it's less than 300 um, milligrams per liter, then we would call it idiopathic gestational hypertension. However, um, if in order for it to be called gestational, it has to develop after 20 weeks. Okay, prior to 20 weeks, you don't call it uh, gestational. You'd call it chronic or something like that. Um, and as many as 25% of these patients end up developing um, uh, preeclampsia. Okay, it's a dangerous condition. Now, what about comparing that to chronic hypertension? So, with chronic hypertension, we're looking at its present. Um, less than 20 weeks or earlier uh, gestation and um, it may persist greater than uh, 12 weeks postpartum and uh, it says up to one-third patients develop superimposed um, preeclampsia. Okay? So um, those are those are pretty big deals there. So <clears throat> of course we understand there's a whole set of what is hypertension, what normal we consider to be at one one twenty. You know, if it's getting up at like one thirties, one forties, then we're starting to think that there's some hypertension going on there. Um, Let's look at some other uh, conditions here. There are some um, complications of pregestational diabetes I want to discuss for a minute. Um, so I'm just going to read them to you so that you're familiar with them. There, pregestational diabetes has complications for both the mother and for the baby. So um, for example, here's just a few. Uh, we worry about polyhydramnios. We call her about maternal. Uh, we worry about maternal mortality. We, we worry about preeclampsia or diabetic ketoacidosis. For the baby, we're more worried about uh, macrosomnia, which means big body, um, cardiac renal defects, uh, polycythemia, uh, perinatal mortality, birth injury like a shoulder dystocia, uh, respiratory distress syndrome, uh, hyperbilirubinemia. Uh, hypocalcemia and renal tube, de tube defects. So those are the kind of things we're worried about in either case. So um, let's go back here. Sorry, I was a little jump in there with the table. I want to bump back really quickly to um, hypertension now. I'm reading this out of a book and for something they put the table under something that's covering earlier, but I still wanted to cover it. So now we're going back to hypertension. I just covered a table that was about gestational uh, diabetes, but hypertension again. So hypertension, we want to monitor the blood pressure closely, obviously, and um, you might need to treat with some hypertensives. But the problem here is that not all, hyperten um, not all hypertensives, hypertensive drugs, um, are safe during pregnancy. So we want to make sure and, and choose ones that are going to be safe. So um, we know that ACE inhibitors can lead to um, uterine <coughs> ischemia. <coughs> and the diuretics can aggravate low plasma volume to the point of uterine ischemia. So which ones are safe? So the ones we want to use are going to be methyl dopa, labetalol, which is a beta blocker, and nefedipine, which is a calcium channel blocker. Nefedipine. Those three are pretty safe to use. 
um, for women who have hypertension during pregnancy. Um, so let's talk about some more complications. So complications of hypertension. Now earlier a moment ago we talked about the, the complications of um, um, a pre-estational diabetes, but here are some of the, the complications of hypertension. So we worry about pre pre clamp man, I'm trying to spell this pre clamp sia pre clamp sia. Um, so the new onset hypertension, systolic blood pressure going to be greater than 140. Um, and the diastolic, that's for systolic, and diastolic is going to be greater than 90. Okay. Okay, so and with eclampsia, we're worried about um, basically when you've got that, when you've got really high blood pressure and you've got protein in your urine, and then all of a sudden they start having seizures that's when you know it's uh, the eclampsia. There's also something called HELP syndrome. And this is a variant of preeclampsia with poor prognosis. It consists of hemolytic anemia. Um, elevated liver enzymes. Um, low platelets. Let's so oops. There we go. So those things concern us. The, uh, the etiology is unknown, but clin clinical manifestations are explained by vasospasm leading to hemorrhage and organ necrosis. So risk factors include nulliparity, in other words, never having kids before. African American ethnicity, extremes of age like less than 20 years old or more than 35 years old, uh, gestation, multiple gestations, so I guess it's a risk to have no gestations and a risk to have, um, I guess that's multiple, pre never mind, multiple pregnancies. Um, molar pregnancy, renal disease due to S uh, systemic lupus erythematosus or type 1 diabetes mellitus, or a family history of preeclampsia and chronic hypertension. So those are all some things that, that worry you. So now, um, let me quickly draw out here some of the uh, presentation of preeclampsia and eclampsia. So let's talk about mild preeclampsia real first. Okay, so with this one, it's usually a sim symptomatic um, blood pressure greater than 140 over 90. Um, on two occasions, six hours apart. So I mean like what if the person was running or something and they had really high blood pressure, it doesn't count. You've got to get this like six hours apart on two different occasions. Um, and that's that's with any time you're going to diagnose uh, hypertension. And also proteinuria um, greater than 300 milligrams over 24 hours. Uh, or one to two positive urine dipsticks. And also edema is another factor here. So what about severe eclampsia? So a severe eclampsia, we're, li we're seeing a blood pressure of 160, excuse me, greater than 160 over 110. This is a big deal. On two occasions, same thing. Uh, six hours apart. Um, renal, we see the proteinuria um, greater than five grams over 24 hours uh, or three to four urine dipsticks or oliguria less than 500 milliliters over 24 hours. Um, we have headache, somnolence, uh, blurred vision, 
let's go tomata um, hyperactive reflexes clonus right upper quadrant pain hemolysis elevated liver enzymes thrombocytopenia help syndrome big deal and then we of course we have eclampsia and basically it's all the same things plus seizures um, but mostly the headache, visual changes, right for gastric quadrant pain. Um, the seizures is where it really turns into eclampsia. So what, is, what about the treatment for all this stuff? So treatment, we're looking at, uh, says the only cure for preeclampsia, eclampsia is delivery of the fetus. So the first thing. That's really going to fix it. But in the meantime, we can manage some things. So um, close to term or worsening preeclampsia, you've got to induce delivery with IV oxytocin, prostaglandin, amniotomy. So if it's really close to the baby's term, just deliver the baby. Um, but what if it's not quite term? So it's far from term. You can, you can do some like bed rest. You can do uh, magnesium sulfate drip continuously. Um, you can do um, seizure prophylaxis. I won't put that down. Um, you can you have to you can treat the magnesium sulfate drip using a um, IV calcium gluconate. That helps us so you don't get toxic levels of magnesium. Um, so what about the severe eclampsia treatment? That one you've really got to handle with uh, the labetalol, um, hydralazine. You're really trying to get it less than 160 over 110. That's really the goal here. Um, and um, the continuous magnesium sulfate and uh, of course the delivery you might need to do a c-section if it gets unstable and then uh, that was severe eclampsia severe pre eclampsia now what about if it's if it's straight up eclampsia in that case um, you want to do the ABC's you know, uh, airway, breathing, circulation. Uh, you want to treat that with uh, oxygen. You treat the seizures with magnesium sulfate, um, or excuse me, prophylaxis of magnesium. You want to treat the seizures with um, diazepam. Um, monitor the baby, give labetalol, hydralazine, um, limit fluids. Put a full catheter in. You might need to initiate. It says seizures may occur antepartum 25% and intrapartum 50% or postpartum 25%. So that's saying 25% um, happen before the baby's born, 50% um, while the baby's being born, and 25% within 48 hours afterwards. Um, complications, preeclampsia is prematurity, fetal distress, stillbirth, placental abruption, seizure, disseminated intravascular coagulation, cerebral hemorrhage, serous retinal detachment, fetal maternal death. And the risk complications of eclampsia are cerebral hemorrhage, aspiration, pneumonia, hypoxic encephalopathy, thromboembolic events, fetal maternal death. So it's a really, really big deal. It's pretty scary. Um, the... Um, so there's some risks with antipartum hemorrhage, but I think I'll, I'll cover that later.